Thank you, Zimbabwe, for tuning into yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agricultural New Directions Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. Today, I am coming to you from Precap Farm here in Midlands, a farm that is owned by the First Family, where we are going to be looking at sheep production. You would find that even on the market, mutton and meat from sheep fetches a higher price, even ranging from $12 to $15 per kilogram, meaning that this is a very lucrative business. To discuss this and more, I'm joined by Vicky, a livestock expert working with the first family here at Precap Farm. Stay tuned. Vicky, thank you so much for taking your time and making time for us to look at sheep production at Precap Farm as a case study to try and motivate our Zimbabwean farmers here in terms of looking at other ventures when it comes to the livestock industry. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. As we get into our discussion, Vicky, I just want a brief background of this enterprise. Maybe you can also mention the breeds that are within this sheep uh, head. Uh, so as you can see for yourself, uh, this is the uh, sheep section. Uh, in terms of numbers, currently we are around 500. Mm -hmm. But what we are aiming uh, by mid-year is to have a thousand okay yes so we have to make sure our breeding this is currently the breeding season so we want as much uh breeding as we can so that we have uh, our numbers very high okay thank you so much Vicky. you spoke of your head but i would also want you to dive a bit deeper looking at the breeds do you have one breed within the 500 head or your various breeds or cross breeding that is within this head all right so uh now our purpose is what's important which leads us to which breed type we need mm -hmm. uh, for us now we are getting into the meat production as you can see the structures we have here uh, so the mostly we have dopa mm -hmm. yeah that's the the breed we we have here that we're going to be using for for meat which you can also mix here and there but that's our main breed okay looking at this housing it is a beautiful housing a beautiful structure yeah. that you can tell it's well ventilated even when it rains yes. there is no room for raindrops to get into this area yes. can you talk to us in terms of the importance of having a proper housing structure for sheep production so this this structure here for the sheep it houses about a thousand to two thousand mm -hmm. sheep which is where we are getting into and as you can see we have compartments yes. we have compartment lights uh why we put in compartments is because we we really want to have control in terms of breeding in terms of feed quantity that we also give uh to our sheep so any that is sick we have a cutting side we have a side where we put the where we quarantine them keep them so that they do not pass on diseases to the other sheep and then even when we are giving feed the ones that would have given birth with um little lambs we also have compartments for them and the ones that are heavily pregnant just before they also give birth we make sure we give them a, a special treatment in their own compartment so that they do not mix with the bigger head so such structures it's very very uh, critical because even if you allow the rains uh, to come in within a period of time you can start having mortalities mm. even also the, just the direct uh, heat if it becomes too much it also does affect our production so that's why we have everything it's 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 housed quite well and uh, even in terms of fresh air coming in there is a lot of fresh air that's also coming in looking at the birth rate Vicky mm -hmm. what are we looking at in terms of years or months or age in terms of maybe production rate productivity and also the number of times it gives birth a year all right so what we did uh in terms of our males we, we invested in the very, very good breeds with the good characteristics um, that we need. So definitely the offsprings that we are going also going to get, they also have got the good characteristics that we need. So most of them actually when giving them, they give us twins. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is something that we invested in and they actually uh, give, give us twins. Um, and then in terms of times, we can look at uh, twice a year yes so even our our mating ratio we make sure we we mix them quite well one as to 25 or at times we actually since it's controlled breeding we we can even do one 
is to 50. One female to one male to, to one 50, 50 yes, females. Exactly. Okay, Vicky, I can tell just looking mm -hmm. from your sheep, they all have tags. Yes. Can you talk to us in terms of the importance of tags and the tagging process? How do you do it? What is the essence or the role that this takes place? All right. So it's, it's very critical to do tagging. Uh, when you're dealing with your livestock because it's for identity that's how you identify that this pig belongs to who and also when we we also would like to see the realm uh, the offsprings mm. that also comes out of a certain realm we would like to see the characteristics so that we see if the genes that we need are there so when we have um a realm with 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 a certain tag in our books we put that and the offspring even in terms of controlling our breeding uh, so that we avoid inbreeding we also do tagging okay now Vicky, speaking of inbreeding can you talk to us in terms of miscarriages still birth what could be the causes and what are ways in which you are controlling such circumstances that is if you are experiencing any still birth or any miscarriages within your head okay that can be there once in a while uh, but uh, not so many times um like um ma mostly we make sure there are a lot of factors that mm -hmm. affect or that can cause lead to stillbirth so we also have to make sure in terms of the feed uh the water because if if the female doesn't have a lot of energy and it's about to give birth so you can imagine uh, the circumstances that can come out we can it can actually abort or if there's a certain disease within that particular uh, female that you it can actually uh, abort or have a miscarriage. Have miscarriage so we, we we do quite a lot to make sure the right size in terms of the realm we do also meet with the right size in terms of um, the, EU. the EU, especially for, for, for the ones that are meeting for the first time. We make sure the sizes of the RAM and the EU are, are within the, the, the same, same range. range. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Vicky, for that. On that note, we also have come to the end of the first segment. We're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in terms of commercial sheep production here at Precap Farm. Stay tuned. Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. We are here in the second segment of your program where we are looking at commercial sheep production. Now, these are some of the enterprises or projects that our Zimbabwean farmers might want to take advantage of given that they have quicker returns. They are not very difficult to manage if you work hand in glove with our veterinary department and experts such like Vicky here who's working with the first family here at Precap Farm. Now, we also encourage you to be a part of these conversations, feel free to get in touch with the producer Wadzanai Manure, 0772 807 506 Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page Agribusiness with Wadzanai Make a follow-up on this episode and more and leave your comments and suggestions They are most welcome to us on our YouTube channel Agribusiness with Wadzanai We are also now available on X formerly known as Twitter Set Agribusiness 110 Now Vicky, we are here in the second segment Welcome back. Thank you let us look at issues around sanitation. There are a lot of people who might want to get into sheep production, but when it comes to their hygiene or sanitation or availability of water, they do not have such. Talk to us in terms of cleaning of this uh, of this crow or this housing. How do you clean it? How do you the periods or the regularity of cleaning? Do you have maybe use for this manure? Do you just throw it away, or you are using it along the value chain? And just the importance of having clean water within a sheep enterprise all right so biosecurity measures we, we do have we we actually always keep uh, our housing very very clean and very very smart why it has also an effect in terms of the diseases uh, that we can have so um, every day when the team comes in in the morning if just in case because we do make feed in here uh, that we also feed uh, our sheep in case there are any plastics from the hay bales or just any foreign material that we think uh, our sheep can eat we make sure everything is removed if there's any stone anything it's, it's, it's removed. Then our water, we do have our containers where we put our water that we clean 
frequently. Mm -hmm. So we make sure our water troughs are also clean all the time and we actually put clean water every day for our sheep, which is also good in terms of um, disease control and uh, our hygiene. Speaking of disease control, can we look at vaccination? What chemicals are most rampant or common when it comes to the vaccination of sheep and some of those diseases that you might want to highlight that are a menace when it comes to sheep production and management? All right. Um, so firstly, uh, in terms of disease control, as long as you are practicing very good hygiene, you can you can barely have diseases. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes we, we, we do receive uh, some sheep mm -hmm. that can be coming from certain areas. So what we do, we make sure we quarantine them for a certain period. Actually now we do a minimum of uh, one month. Mm -hmm. We make sure they are quarantined, we put them, give them water while they are there, feed while they are there, and then we we vaccinate uh, against pulp kidney, which we do once a year. And we, we also uh, do, in case there are any diseases or anything, usually we use your ivermectin or a penicillin um, for controlling any other disease. But however, this is just the ones we use generally. Okay. They can be, in case there's any specific disease which, are, which requires a certain medication, then it can be availed accordingly okay now Vicky you would find that looking at your sheep just by mere looking you can tell that this one is healthy mm -hmm. or you can look and say this one might not be feeling well mm -hmm. or it also may be headed towards death the mortality rate could even increase mm -hmm. due to certain issues or certain scenarios that might arise yeah. I want you to talk to us in terms of signs and symptoms mm -hmm. that you look at and say this sheep this ear this whatever male could be maybe having a disease or having a challenge because we've seen certain scenarios looking but by just merely looking at it with your naked eye okay uh there are quite uh, a lot of factors uh that we look at firstly uh it can have uh watery diarrhea mm. yes so if you look at the back sometimes the the diarrhea will be all over um the tail at the back so that can show you on its own that uh this ram or the ewe or a little yeah. lamb has got some it's it's not feeling well yeah. that's the first thing then the second thing is if you yeah. look at its appetite yes you see it it will not be having that large appetite to eat its feed or to graze outside then you can tell that there's something wrong uh, with your sheep and you also need to just look at the general appearance it will not be that active mm. as as the usual if you look at it, it it will not be that active so if you see it's a bit weak and not active definitely uh it requires urgent attention it means um it's not feeling well so there are so many other yes. factors you can look at but some of the symptoms they depend on the specific disease Okay, in terms of your feeding regimen, the periods of feeding, the nutrients or the macronutrients and micronutrients that are essential for proper growth of sheep. You are doing commercial sheep farming here. Yes. What are those nutrients that are essential and what kind of feed that do provide those kinds of nutrients when it comes to production? Okay, so all nutrients are very important because yes. each particular nutrient plays each particular role whether it's um, your proteins you're looking at your vit vitamins you're looking at your phosphorus each plays its particular role so what we do is like currently if you look at the pastures they are pastures they they have they are very nutritious they have all the nutrients that are needed by our sheep though we supplement but when we supplement mostly it's when we are beginning the winter time yes that's when we start uh, supplementing so protein content is uh, needed uh, also you need fat you need a lot of energy uh, when it's giving fat or when it's carrying a, a little lamp inside all those nutrients are needed so that the lamp inside also is healthy. Thank you so much, Vicky, for giving us such a detailed presentation in terms of commercial sheep production. On that note, viewers, we've come to the end of the second segment. We're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more here at Precap Farm, where we are looking at commercial sheep production. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agriculture and New Directions, Agribusiness, in support of Vision 2030. Today we are in Midlands, and I'm coming to you from the first family's farm here at Precab, where we are looking at commercial sheep production. You'd find that most of our aspiring farmers here in Zimbabwe have an interest in sheep production, but they might not have the know-how on how to undertake such enterprises and projects, which is the very case today. We are going to be enlightening each other and demystifying each other in terms of the mystery conceptions that are normally around our farming community when it comes to sheep production. I am joined by Vicky here, who is a livestock expert working with the first family in their livestock enterprises. Vicky, we are here in the third and final segment. Welcome back. Thank you, Adza. Now, looking at your culling procedures, what are those maybe factors that you look at before taking your sheep either to the slaughterhouse, to the abattoir, or general culling, releasing on certain sheep? What do you look at the factors that you consider? Uh, okay, so culling uh, will be removing those unproductive sheep uh, from the total herd. It would not make a lot of sense for us to keep the ones that are not productive. It means our costs are high in terms of feed, in terms of vaccinations, in terms of dipping. So for us to cut our cost and also to have income, we do culling. Mm -hmm. From the culling of the sheep, if there are any other expenses which are related to the sheep, uh, that's where we we take uh, the man from to purchase because we are running this as a business. Yes. Yes. So we look for those that are constantly, that are always sick. Maybe you treat it after two, three months, it's, it's sick again or it's constantly losing weight. It means even in terms of production, it's minimum. So we call that. Then we also, like, we, we do not want uh, inbreeding. Mm. So if we see that this particular ram has been breed mating with this particular sheep and now we have the offsprings and the offsprings has reached a certain age uh, where now they can mate to produce uh, little ones as well we call that particular oh, ram okay. yes and also even those you when they give birth uh, they have uh, calving they have the losses mm. where, where they have those complications when giving birth we also call them because that means if we leave them within the particular flock, it means their offspring will also have those bad genes. Those that, deformities. Yes, that we do not want. So we get rid of them at the beginning. And even the male ones that we know these ones we are not going to use for breeding. We cow, we slaughter, we fatten them and we take them to the butcher. Now Vicky, you as the manager here, you look at records, you deal with records that come from your subordinates, from the employees. When it comes to record keeping as a manager, I want us to talk about the importance of record keeping in livestock production. Record keeping is very, very critical. It's very important. Why we do that? It helps us to see our production and how are we performing and how many uh, lamps do we have this year. So we keep all our records. We make sure even in terms of uh, mortalities, we do have our records where we know how, how many died or if there are any, if there is none, so that we look at the performance and which particular breed is actually dying frequently. That's also the importance of the records. Even when we want to trace which mm -hmm. rams, remember, we, we are investing in very expensive rams because mm -hmm. we want the offsprings to be okay. We see which ram has got the particular genes. We, we vet that through the offsprings that mm -hmm. it would have. So we keep the records of making sure if it's take number 001, which ones were the offspring that came out of it and how are they performing? So should we keep that ram or not is the importance of our records. Even when it comes to some which gives birth, to two uh, at a particular time we also keep such records and it's good to keep them so that it helps us to run and make decisions on our sheep production thank you so much vicky finally as we close this episode i want us to look at issues surrounding markets the name of the program is agribusiness yes. farmers who might want to venture in sheep production are looking to make a living off of their sheep production mm -hmm. they are looking to have every return per dollar invested they are looking to look at it and take farming as a formidable business looking at markets vicky your views as you move around mm -hmm. your sentiments how is the market for lamp meat or market 
cut and meat because not all the time when you get into supermarkets it's not every day where you see mutton meat yes. meaning i would like to think maybe there might be a gap for sheep production talk to us in terms of the markets your views and sentiments as someone who manages a sheep enterprise that's very true we are actually not meeting the demand even if you look like you've explained in some of the supermarkets there is very high demand for mutton uh, but our local farmers are not even able to meet the demand. So that's why we need that importance of planning so that you know this particular month you are letting out, if it's a thousand or it's 500, mm. depending on your planning. So most of the farmers don't do proper planning. So at the end, they end up having nothing in terms of production because they would have sold out. So even if you look, there's even market outside for export okay. which can actually bring in uh, a lot of foreign currents to our country and we we not able to meet that demand and even locally just within the farmers themselves uh every day in different when different groups of farming uh you have a lot of farmers that are making inquiries about purchasing sheep where yes. can they get so it means somehow there is a gap and there is that uh, if there is any other young people out there or any other person who wants to venture into sheep production, there is a lot of market for that. Thank you so much, Vicky. It was a pleasure having you with us today. But I want you to give us a word of advice in a snippet to those farmers who are looking to get into sheep production. Chido chiriko, shidaka daka chiriko. People want to why is your word of advice for someone who is starting? Zisha Okay, so for any other person who wants to do sheep production, the sky is the limit. Yes, what they always have to do is they have to look at the purpose. Why do they want to get into that sheep production? Then they also start the market because you cannot bring do something and then you, before you look for the market because there might not be particular buyers or that particular breed is is flooded in the market or it has certain characteristics that the buyers do not want so you have to start your market very well and interact with other farmers that are in sheep production you learn quite a lot and you hear the shortfalls the mistakes which they would have made and when you are starting now you you also um start with with a good note and a lot of information and even when we are starting don't be too greedy mm. we, we learn don't be what, over yes, ambitious don't be over <laughs> ambitious you don't have to invest into a realm probably that is a thousand dollars when you are starting why you can make a lot of mistakes and you have uh, you you make losses mm. you would have yes so you would rather i would rather say yes invest in something that's just prime minimum then as you are learning as you're going then you increase your production and now you can now have even your expensive breed that way you become a successful farmer thank you so much vicky for giving us the nitty-gritties of sheep production here at precap farm we are welcome Wadza. there you had it viewers we are looking at sheep production vicky here in her final words in her parting words was telling us to build into something bigger do not use huge chunks of money or huge financial resources and invest in something that you do not have knowledge on so you need to start small and build as you go from me your host was the name manure i'm also on instagram it's a w manure and the crew behind the scenes have yourselves a fabulous evening thank you for watching <laughs>